runs with courage. Epilogue. The wind blew cold, coldly outside the RTP. For a moment, I stopped, hoping if I listened carefully enough, I'd be able to hear our ancestors speak through the winds. But as always, in our home on the prairie, I could not. The season was in change. Even though it was still cold, the air outside had already begun to grow warmer. Soon, I'd be able to hear the sounds of crickets singing in their lullaby at night. I looked forward to the time when the prairie would awaken from its winter slumber and burst into bloom. There was always hope in changing of the seasons. Bear stepped through the teepee flat and I smiled. He was in his own time of change. He was as nearly as tall as I was, and I knew it would not be long before he would be taller. At most, or at almost ten seasons, he was well on his way to becoming a man. He was eager and quick, and I was proud of all that he had learned in the past seasons of my teaching. He was almost equal with my own knowledge, and I had even started teaching some of the younger cousins. They treated the English words as if it were a fun game, but he knew the seriousness of learning. The, ser or the student was fast becoming a teacher. Let us work on our letter writing, I said. Bear nodded. Together we had learned that there were two kinds of letters in the white world, those who formed words and those that the whites used to communicate with each other. The practice of writing le or letter writing was an important way of communicating for whites, and we both wanted to be better learned how to do this. It felt strange to speak to someone who is not next to you. We had been practicing by writing pretend letters to each other. Bear leaned over his slate and began writing. I looked down at my slate, unsure of how to begin my own practice my own practice letter. Absently, my fingers or I fingered the leather strap I carried with me always and and suddenly had a longing to write letters to catch his fire. In the meetings the meetings I now had every year with school officials took place in town buildings, far away from the school. I had not been allowed to visit the school or see the teachers or students. When I asked about Ketch's fire, I was ignored. Eventually, I stopped asking. I did not often allow myself to think of him or my days at school. It caused too much pain in my heart. But now, I let myself slip away from our teepee, away from our Tio spa, and on to the school. Was Ketch's fire still at the school? Was he keeping well and laughing, dear? She would be much older now. What of her? I pictured the faces of Walks Tall and Moon Awake and felt tears down fall down my face. Sister, what are you thinking? Bear's voice startled me. I looked over to see him watching me cry. You cry? He said, yes, I answered. What are you thinking? He repeated and placed his hands on my lap, waiting for me to say more. Despite my tears, I smiled. He was becoming more like uncle in the way that he would stop and listen carefully. It has been so many seasons since I left the school, I said. Years, according to the white men's calendar, and yet there are still faces still, or their faces still fill my mind. I wish to know of laughing deer and catches fire. Are they well? Perhaps you should write them a letter, he said. In this way, he was still my little brother, naive and optimistic in what he wanted. I knew the officials would never allow Ketch's fires to receive a letter. I wouldn't know where to send it. I don't think it would ever reach him, I said. I will write a letter to Ketch's fire, brother said, matter-of-factly, erasing the letters or the practice letter on his slate, starting a new one. I looked down on my own slate and pictured Ketch's fire. His face was frozen forever, clearly in my mind, even though I knew time would have changed how he looked. Instead of a letter, I began to write about the first time I had seen Ketch's fire, when he had burned my clothes. I wrote without stopping, without really thinking, just letting the words pour out of me. And as I wrote, I realized I wanted to write down all that had happened at the school. I wanted to write everything about Ketch's fire and Laughing Deer, using white words so the whites could read their bright whites could read their stories. When I ran out of space on my slate, I searched through my teaching supplies to find some of the few pieces of paper I had had. Carefully, I also pulled out the small bottle of ink in my pen. I would write words that were permanent and that could not be erased. I would write for those who had not been allowed to speak. I would tell their stories. I filled the pen with ink and I began.